All right, guys, thanks for tuning into the Scan Tool Network. In this video, we're looking at the ICOS of CR Ultra, uh, one of the first looks at a CR Ultra, and we're going to use it just to diagnose a few faults. It's nothing, nothing extreme, just a few basic fault finding uh, and code reset warnings. So we're in a 2017 Ford Focus here, where you can see we've got the check engine warning lights, we've got the airbag warning light, and a few ABS warning lights as well. So this is like the this is the daddy of um, sort of iCarsoft tools. This is the top of top top of the range. It's even way above the uh, the iCarsoft CR Max. This is like a full-on dealer level uh, package here. So um, actually, what we're going to be doing today is is sort of not really dealer level at all. It's just kind of basic stuff. But it's just to really show you the tool, uh, just to give you a quick outline of sort of the what it looks like um, when it's connected to the vehicle. We, it's a Bluetooth system, so we've got a, like a wireless dongle plugged in right down there, the diagnostic port. And you can either select your vehicle manu manually, so you could go down these route of selecting your manufacturer manually. As you can see, it just covers a huge, huge range. Uh, but what I like to do is just to do it intelligent diagnosis and what it does is it finds the VIN number, finds the vehicle and it just makes things a lot quicker. So it's found the VIN number, it's telling us it's a 2017 Ford and we'll go diagnosis. You can do quick access but I like to go into it in a little bit greater detail so it can show you the full menu of what it can do. I'm not going to go into all of the menus but it's just an example of what, what menus you will see when you connect to the vehicle. So it's going to give us a list of health reports, which you can print off, uh, system selection to diagnose, module programming, vehicle information, assist the full system scan, special functions like DPF regenerations, uh, service resets, I'll, come, I'll show you that screen in a second, and uh, advanced driver system calibration. So we're just going to go to system selection and we're going to look at the, uh, the engine system, which will be the PCM. Uh, you guys can probably see it already. I'm struggling. Nope, there it is. PCM powertrain control module. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a basic fault code find. And then we're going to reset that fault code and reset the warning light. I'll have to maneuver the tool to show you the warning lights at the same time. So, but it's just doing a quick connection to the uh, the vehicle here. So if we go to read fault code, retrieve continuous DTCs. It's telling us it's communicating. And then you can see this is the fault code that we've been getting here. P0353. That is like the generic version. This is the more detailed version. Uh, but ultimately it's ignition coil C primary control circuit open. So if you weren't sure what any of this meant, uh, best thing to do is just click the, uh, copy the information through to Google and you can guarantee that if you put the fault code in the description in, somebody else will also have had that fault and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Um, but we go back to DTCs and we go to, we're going to go to clear fault memory. Now when I do this, just keep an eye on the check engine like there when I do this. So clear fault memory, yes. And there we go, the check engine light has gone. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Uh, again, we'll do the same with the uh, the airbag system. So that will be like restraint control module. Can we see that anywhere? Here it is. It's such a big, big, heavy, bulky unit, this. Um, but it's, it's done, it's by design because you, you don't want to drop it on the floor or anything and for it to break, it's an expensive unit, so. There's a reason for that. Um, it's designed for the workshop environment. So there's the fault code. There is the um, airbag fault code description. So again, we'll go back. We'll go to clear fault memory and keep an eye on the airbag light when I do this. There we go. Airbag light has gone off. Now the last one, we've got the ABS warning lights on this side here, so I'm going to show you. This is We've set this up a little bit differently. What we've done is we've unclipped an ABS sensor um, and we haven't put it back together. So we're going to show you what will happen is if you try to reset the warning lights and reset the fault code if you haven't physically fixed the fault. So we'll go to read fault code, get the fault code first of all, see if it will pick that up correctly, which you know I don't, don't see any reason why it wouldn't. It's a rear right by the way. 
there we go all, all wheel speed sensor rear right so it's picked that up correctly what you can actually what I was doing when I was going back you can actually just use this button here clear DTCs so in fact we'll do that we haven't fixed the fault we're going to try and clear the diagnostic trouble codes and the warning lights so we'll go yes clearing fault memory completed okay so you'll notice though that obviously the warning lights are still on the dashboard and it's going to go back and communicate with the ABS system that's probably going to show these fault codes again which it has and that is because any scan tool it doesn't matter whether you pay hundred pounds or ten thousand pounds for a scan tool no scan tool can reset the warning lights or reset the fault codes unless the fault, fault has physically been fixed. So this scan tool, all it can really do is send the information to the ECU to say, okay, we want to reset this fault code and reset this warning light. And then on the other side of that, the ECU will come back and say either, yes, okay, we're happy that the fault has been fixed or no, there's an open connection or the fault hasn't been fixed. So in the, in the latter of the two, we're going to leave the ABS warning lights on and leave the fault codes on the memory bank. That is, as I say, it doesn't matter whether you've got a high-end tool or a low-end tool. Those are the, um, I don't want to say laws of diagnostics, but those are the ethics of diagnostics. Um, it would be unethical for anybody to produce a tool that would just get rid of a warning light, even though the fault hasn't been fixed, because that is not good for safety. There would be millions of cars uh, all over the world that are looking safe and looking healthy, but really they have faults in the systems. So that's why that is done. Um, but that is just in a nutshell what the CR Ultra can do. It's a fantastic tool actually. Um, um, what I've done here is only just really covering 1% of what it can do. Um, I'm going to go back to the main, main screen. If we go to the maintenance, these are like what the special functions and the service functions are. So you can see it can do like um, brake resets, oil resets, steering angle sensors, new battery registration, brake bleeding, electronic throttles, TPMS, DPF regenerations, add blues, airbags, um, headlights, coolants, gear, gearbox matching, immobilizer, injector coding, brake bleeding, EGR valve, and a lot more there. But it's uh, yeah, it's a fantastic tool, really set up for the workshop environment but what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop the link to this kit in the description below this video uh, there are fakes there are clones out there and unfortunately they can damage a vehicle so it's uh, definitely make sure you pick up the genuine and official product okay thanks for watching and i hope this helps